Beautiful. Boys, girls, ladies and gentlemen, if you are here, I assume you are here for the roof scoop update on the C8 Corvette. I know I have been dropping the ball on it. I had actually been extremely busy. We moved, I was in the hospital. There was all kinds of things going on, but say no more. I'm gonna give you guys the full update here. So this is originally where we were at. This is the 3D printed roof scoop. It's the wide mouth. I went away from the narrow mouth one. It gives you an idea of what we had. Um, these were good until they were shipped to the Southern states like Texas and lower California and stuff. It's funny, you can bake these into it in an oven to over 160 degrees, no problem. You get them out in the sun where it's 80 degrees Fahrenheit and they don't do well. So we're gonna be fixing that and addressing that issue. So what we're going to do is, I'm just gonna time lapse this whole thing so you guys can see, but we're gonna be making this out of carbon fiber and I will in the future only be selling them from carbon fiber because they just do not hold up in the elements. It doesn't seem to matter what we print them out of. For future reference, if you guys are looking for these, I'm no longer going to be doing them 3D printed. I will only be doing them carbon fiber. It is a 2-2 weave, so it is a nice weave. You'll see it at the end of the video. Another issue we ran into is the original one that was made from carbon fiber was made by a guy in Saskatoon. He's the carbon fiber man. He makes my carbon fiber look like a joke. Uh, and what we ran into was you have to make these in two pieces. You can't make them in one piece. And as I approached that 200 kilometer an hour mark on a closed track, of course, where he had separated the two pieces, it basically exploded. Rightfully so, because when you think about it after, if you stick your hand out a car window at 100 kilometers an hour, there's a lot of drag there. Now double that, 200 kilometers an hour, right? All that air is being forced in here, and essentially all you're doing is building a bomb. It's only a matter of time before this completely lets go, and that's what happened, right? So you almost have to make them functional if you're gonna be doing high speeds. And that's not a big deal, we're gonna get into that. The next issue was, they were using two sided tape, it was fine, we had one let go, Jamie was driving, I think he was doing about 240 kilometers an hour when I let go. What I designed to change from there, this is the top of your C8 Corvette. This is this one I grabbed at Salvage. Um, there's your backup camera. So at this point, you do lose your rear view camera. When you're using your rear view mirror, you do lose that camera if your car is equipped with. So essentially this just goes on here and we would two-sided tape it on there. Life is good, but I didn't like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, when I make this, from composite, I'm gonna make it one piece. And then what we're gonna do is, this is where we ran into trouble. So I did try and mass produce these out of carbon fiber because originally I was gonna make two pieces. And that's what happened here, is the paint did not hold up the composite heat too well. So then I decided I was gonna try and make these, but there's just too many bends and curves and stuff. So I had Kevin 3D print these. And essentially what I'm gonna do is this is gonna be one piece on here. We're gonna have these 3D printed and they're strong, nice and solid. They're gonna go on there like that. And then what you're gonna do is on your piece, you're gonna take your clips out of here. They just slide out, right? And you'll replace them on here. You're gonna be getting this like this. Life is good, you hammer it on, and away you go. Now, where we run into a problem is I no longer have a C8 Corvette. So, as you saw in the earlier videos, I built a carbon fiber hood for my friend Don. Well, Don doesn't know yet, but he's about to get a carbon fiber roof scoop because I need to know how these fit. So, with that said, we're gonna go out to the garage. We're gonna make this one piece. We're gonna start sanding it. It's pretty rough. I think I'm gonna hit it with a 40 grit and then uh, maybe an 80, but I'm going to end up, I'll end up filling this gap here and then I'm going to end up hitting this with uh, a high build automotive primer. I'm gonna let that cure because it's gonna bite good to this. And then we'll end up wet sanding that right down to about an 800. And then we're gonna start the mold process. I'm not 100% sure how I'm gonna do the mold yet. I think I am gonna split it on this line right here. And then I'm gonna put them together using body panel adhesive, which should be stronger than the epoxy that Kate used. It's good to about 6,000 PSI. I put body panels on with it. And that car later got into a collision and then the panel was still on there. So it should be good, life's good. Let's, uh, let's go knock this one out of the park and deliver it to Don. I think he's gonna be pumped. And if you don't follow Don's Life channel, you should because he recently got a CH Corvette that he's been driving around and it looks pretty awesome. Okay guys, so what I'm doing is I'm spraying this in a high build primer 
I have no intention of this actually making it smooth, although it will get out some of the imperfections. The main reason I'm doing this is because of the plastic that the scoop is made from or 3D printed from. The gel coat I want to put on there won't bond to it, but it will bond to the primer and the primer will bond to the plastic. So the idea here is to put the high build primer on it, block it out to get it relatively straight and smooth, put the gel coat on and that's what will fill most of the imperfections and we will get it glossy and smooth and then we will move on to the tooling gel coat and from there the rest of the mold. Okay, so we've got the gel coat all on here. It's nice and cured. We did use the wax that you saw me pour in there. Now from here, we're going to hit this a few times. We're gonna hit it with a, probably a 180 grit and then a 240, probably the 320, probably go over it with a 400 after that, then a six and an eight and a thousand, then a 1200. Then we're gonna polish it nice and smooth. Okay, so that's it, that's pretty good. So the next battle is, I was trying to think of the best way to tackle this. And originally I was kind of thinking, do I cut it with a Dremel along this body line? Similar to the pictures of like what Cade did here, but I'm gonna go against that. And I think I'm gonna build the two piece mold right on here. So I think we're gonna run a piece of puck board all across this line here. It'll be a good separation line. And then I think we'll come down this transition here, maybe here, I'm not sure and then across here, because I want to mold this whole top piece as one. We're going to hot glue gun, or hot melt glue as some people call it, uh, some puck board across here. This is the hardest part for me. This is where I struggle the most, is making the mold. So the other thing to keep in mind is when we're laying the carbon afterward, how many transitions do we have? So we come across here, that's not too bad, but we have this other transition here, and we don't want too many uneven lines, but then we're gonna have two transitions right here in this corner. So some of the material you'll end up seeing me use is just some cheap puck board. It's super cheap, like I think a yard of it or a square meter works out to like $12 or something. So we're gonna use about 50 cents worth of that on here. I may have to heat it up with a hairdryer in certain spots to mold and manipulate it, but we'll definitely run a piece across here. Okay guys, it's been a quick 12 hours. Things are kind of tacky. I'm not overly concerned about this. This all looks good. This is kind of the risk you run into when you're making molds is, you know, shit can go sideways fast. So this all looks really good. I know you guys are probably like, oh my God, it's streaky, but underneath it won't be streaky. My concern, however, is my mold where my tape was adjusted here. And now we kind of have this underlying cut here. This underlying cut that's somewhat hard to see. So I'm hoping that once we put the fiberglass on and we pull it apart, we can repair that. Unfortunately, we won't know until the entire mold is done. And keep in mind, we're only halfway through right now. We have the entire other side to do yet. We probably have another four to five hours of work before we even know if we can repair that and this might all be scrapped. So we're gonna keep cruising along and see what that brings. Next up, we're gonna be putting down our resin and we're gonna be painting it on with a brush and we will be laying Three different styles of mat. We'll do a really light six gram mat to kind of help with the contour a little bit. First, we're gonna use a six gram cloth and a 10 gram cloth. Helps add a little bit of flexibility when we're working with things, but then we want the rigidity as well, especially on the vacuum side of things. So we're going to be using a fiberglass cloth or fiberglass mat after. It'll really add that rigidity we need. All right guys, we are in uncharted waters here. I have never had anything like this happen before. You can see how it's all white. It got extremely hot. I mean, it's hard. I put it outside where it was minus 25 Celsius to try and cool it. I put snow on it, you can still see it's actually wet. My concern, my big, big concern is, is the plug okay? And we're not gonna know really until we take it all apart. So it did pull apart good guys, uh, it was a good release. So that's good, however, bad news. If you look inside, you can see that it is in fact, does have a warp to it. Do we carry on with the mold? I don't know, like I'm already skeptical because of how it kind of overlaps here. I could clean that up really fast though, it wouldn't take long. I'm gonna go to bed and uh, I'll make a decision tomorrow, I guess.
All right, guys, next morning I got up early. I knocked this thing out and uh, it's actually not as bad as I thought. So I'm kind of regretting taking it out. Although we might be able to get it back in. It might go back in there. We'll see. Oh yeah, there it goes. I'm gonna fill the gaps with some wax and uh, go from there. I'm not impressed, but I'm surprised it's better than I expected. So that's good. I took this mixing stick here and you can see the gap in there, right? See that half inch gap, three quarters of an inch there, right? See that gap? Interesting enough, when you do the same thing on here, there's zero gap, zero. So that's cool. So what happened was this turned into essentially an oven, I guess. This cured and pulled away from this, and then it got so hot it actually warped this, which is kind of why we're going away from these. Now, interesting enough, I put my thermal gun on here when it was getting hot, and it was 210 degrees Fahrenheit. So, yeah, pretty hot. Truth here. Let's see what kind of release we have. Oh, my smokes, it's tight. Maybe I should have used more wax. Moment of truth. Now, can we get this out of here? Now I bet I know what you're thinking. Oh, finally we can lay some carbon. No, no, we have probably in the neighborhood of 10 hours and prep work and cleanup to do before we even think about laying carbon. Okay, so if you guys are wondering what I'm doing here, uh, I'm essentially, I'm sanding this right now in a 40 grit. It's a little aggressive, but it is pretty rough. Um, doesn't matter if it burns through the primer because the exterior part, we just need the gum tape line to be smooth. So we're going to go around and sand this. We'll end up sanding in here too with more of a, I'll be hit it with a 220 or a 320 and we'll end up polishing this. Soon. So another problem. So if you look right there, we've got a pretty good hair gap there that we tried to avoid. We don't have a lot of gel coat there. It's pretty thin. You can actually see through it. And right there. So rather than mix up gel coat, I might just put some epoxy on there because it does sand and polish nicely. <laughs> been about six hours we're gonna take this thing apart it won't be fully cured yet this epoxy is a 36 hour fully fully cured but it's a 12 hour sandable so it should be uh, relatively hard
All right, let's see what kind of release we get here. I'm actually curious as to how the product turned out because I had it sitting leaning up against the garbage can and at some point it fell over and it was upside down like this. And so I had it sitting like this and it fell over. That doesn't look too bad. Probably looks rough to you guys because it's got all the PVA on it. I'm gonna clean this up and I'll come back and show you guys. Okay guys, I've got the infusion happening over there on the upper half of the roof scoop. Clean the PVA off there, this is what it kind of looks like. We'll end up having to sand this down and uh, I'll put another layer of uh, gel coat on it just to make it a little stiffer. I mean, it is, it is very, very stiff and rigid, but when you think this thing's flying on the highway, you know, with all that air ramming in there, things uh, don't always go as planned. We're gonna come back in 12 hours once that's all done. The infusion will be done in about an hour, but then we need to wait 12 hours minimum. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I usually struggle so much with a bag assembly. I always end up with a hole somewhere or I can't get a full 30 inches of vacuum. Guess what? That bag worked perfect. That is the best bag I have ever put on a carbon fiber piece. Amped about it. All right, see you guys tomorrow. Guys, 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 it's a new, beautiful day. It is early, I'm trying to be quiet. It's 4.30 in the morning, my family's sleeping. I just, I couldn't contain myself. I'm so excited for this bag on this thing and how well it actually turned out. So we'll get these clamps off here. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Oh man. All right, let's get this apart here. I'll take the tape off out if you guys don't want to see that. All right, let's see what we got here. Beautiful. Look at that PVA off there so you guys can actually see. So it looks shiny, you can see that's with PVA, that's without PVA. You can see the differences there. So we'll get it cleaned off, go on there somehow. I'm not sure how we're doing that yet. We'll get there. It's gonna be good. We'll be back. We're gonna let this cure, but while this is curing, I think we're gonna try and make a fiberglass one. You know, a lot of people wanna wrap their stuff or maybe paint it, you know, maybe you wanna do it whatever color your car is or whatever. Um, so I think we're gonna do, we'll use the same molds and I think we're gonna do a fiberglass one and then we'll finish it primer. If people wanna wrap it or paint it or whatever they want, they don't have to pay the big money for carpet fiber. You could do fiberglass relatively cheap. So that said, let's get cooking. Let's uh, see if we can pump out a fiberglass one here. I've never done that, I'm new to it. So uh, if you see something you don't like, drop a comment, just go easy on me. Together still but uh, you can see it's it's pretty good it's quite a bit heavier than the carbon fiber one like significantly but uh, you know the cool thing is for me assembling this where the seam is I don't have to be super careful I'm actually probably gonna just wrap it in some mat around here or cloth and uh, sand it to finish it I might bond it too I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet but overall really easy um, as you can see you know it's got a nice finish on it and uh, yeah we'll get this finished up here the fiberglass together I put it together with some fiberglass epoxy and from there I used uh, some fiberglass to put the two pieces together and from there now we're gonna lay down some black gel coat the gel coat will not only add, add a little bit of structural integrity but it'll also make this thing pretty much bulletproof for whoever's taking it and then they don't have to worry about it so we got the gel coat on here now we're gonna let this sit for the night come back tomorrow hit it with probably 120 grit maybe an 80 grit 
this nice and flat work whip to about a thousand or twelve hundred grit about that polishing is thing it'll be nice and smooth all right guys so that kind of concludes it let's go through what we did we took a 3d printed roof scoop that i designed with my friend kevin and we turned it into carbon fiber like this so one thing to point out i did change the mounting on it so Originally this would two-sided tape on, and now it's all one molded piece and uses your OE clips. The reason I went away from this design was I sold one to a guy named Scott, and I don't remember where Scott lived somewhere hot, and it actually melted on him, which is crazy, because I thought to myself, how hot can you get somewhere? I mean Canada, so I mean it gets 30 Celsius. But I started thinking, what about in Texas? Florida. So just for fun, I put one of these in the oven at 55 degrees Celsius, which is like, to me, very hot. And it was fine. It's made of, it's printed of ABS plastic. I got an email from Scott, not right away, but shortly after, and it had melted on him. That said, I originally started doing the carbon fiber ones. This one is the carbon fiber 2x2 twill instead of the plane. So you can see it's got a much nicer print to it. Scott, you don't know yet, buddy. I'm gonna send you this one. This will not melt on you. It is fiberglass. These are functional, by the way. There is a hole in the bottom of them. So you can punch a hole into your engine bay and actually have a functional roof scoop. So that's it. That said, if you haven't watched the video and you are here specifically for the C8 Corvette roof scoop, I encourage you to check the link in the bio. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.